Alrighty folks, welcome back to Talos Principle 2. How's everybody doing? I said we talked to Byron, but Byron walked off. You're over there. <laughs> As you can tell, sometimes I record these sessions like back to back basically. Uh, just to get ahead of myself, so um, I'm not constantly having to catch up and make sure I've got something recorded for the next day or whatever. Um, hey Byron, let's have a chat. Hey there, 1K. Uh, tell me a joke. Okay. How many robots does it take to change a light bulb? Um, I don't know how many. Replacing a light bulb is a waste of resources, and the founder would be outraged. Ah, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Herman didn't seem to think so. <laughs> Herman, how do I say Herman has no sense of humor? Oh. Uh, I noticed the Miranda called Athena her mother. She did, yes. Is that usual? Some people in New Jerusalem choose to live in family units, mm -hmm. although usually that involves marriage or equivalent ceremonies, not having children. You could say that Athena was a kind of mother to us and Cornelius a kind of father, but it's not quite the same. What about the other one that was there at the start? Uh, why do you believe there I should think be more people? Every human being is completely unique, and every instance of consciousness is a miracle. The more of us there are, the more alive the universe is. And the more we all interact with each other, the more complex the life of the universe becomes. So I believe that people are a fundamental good. I don't believe we're all flawless, but I think every one of us matters precisely because nothing else does. No, that's not true that nothing else does. Uh, does your faith in humanity ever waver? In the principle of it? No. It, it's not just that I believe humanity is fundamentally good, although I do. It's that I think sentience mm, is the foundation again. of everything else. What's the point of stars and galaxies, of hills and forests, without someone to perceive them? But my faith that we can actually grow up, that we can break out of these loops and take control of our destiny, that's something I struggle with every single day. You're speaking to a panpsychist, mate. <laughs> sort of. A certain flavor of panpsychism. Uh, do you believe in the existence of something sublime or transcendent? In the sense of an interventionist deity? No. I wouldn't rule out the possibility, but it's not something I personally believe. But I do think there is something genuinely sublime in this universe. And it is and us. It's right in front of us. It's our ability to perceive the world. Yep. The fact that this sense of self is even possible. Sure. That an arrangement of matter can produce a self-aware mind. Think about it. I agree with that. It's a fundamental property of the yes. universe, an unbreakable law that matter has the inherent capacity yes. to become more than the sum of its parts. That mm. is the definition of transcendence. Sure. <laughs> I agree with that part. I just don't agree with the part where you say it's something fundamentally human. Um, or something that makes humans like special in a particular way. Uh... Particle clouds. Athena was always trying to understand the reality underneath what we perceive, the objective mm -hmm. truth. That's why she was capable of leaving the simulation. And even after she was free, she never stopped trying to understand more. I suspect her research took her another step closer to understanding the truth. And such steps always challenge our conception of the universe. But that's the wonderful thing about science. We can adapt our views to the evidence. 
What if Athena left the island long ago? Then at least we may be able to find out what happened in New Jerusalem. Why she came here. But I don't think she left the island. I think she's still here, waiting for us to make the right choices. Oh, yeah. Uh, what makes you think that? It's hard to articulate. Just a feeling. There just seems to be so much intent here. It might be intent. There has to be a reason for all this. Doesn't mean she's here. And Athena is the only reason that makes sense. Sure, doesn't mean she's here. Do you think the Bag Strict technology could be misused? Could be, yes. Of course. All technology has the potential to be misused. From fire and the wheel to whatever makes these particle clouds. But that doesn't mean it has to be. Uh, if te technology isn't the problem, why did our ancestors destroy themselves? Because they refused to grow up. They refused to take control of their lives. They let bureaucrats and financiers determine their destiny, and <laughs> those people could not think beyond themselves, beyond the tiny, insignificant moment they were trapped in. Their technology could have saved them, but what really failed them was their imagination. But it didn't, because we're here. <laughs> How did Mayor Hermanubus get elected? Herman? <laughs> Honestly, I think he makes people feel safe. The world beyond our walls is frightening. Human history is full of failures and disasters. It's easy to look at that and recoil. Herman offers a vision of the future that feels contained, manageable. Mm -hmm. uh... But what do we sacrifice to gain our safety? Precisely. Exactly, yep. <laughs> our curiosity, our creativity, our ability to grow. Everything that made us who we are. To me, that's not worth it. Um, five. To be clear, I do think it's special that we get to observe the universe in the way that we do as humans. <laughs> I do think that's special. Um, oh, wait, I found a triangle puzzle? What? Didn't, wasn't I just following the directions to five? Um, oh no, five's that way again. Oh, down here. Okay. Uh, well, the triangle puzzle's easy to find, that's nice. Um, uh, I think, you know, yeah, the very fact that we get to experience the world is like, oh gosh, am I stuck? Nope, nope, there we go. It's like, super special. <laughs> it is uh, something I reflect on a lot. How special it is to exist. What a thing to be a witness to the sunshine. What a dream to just be walking on the ground. Etc. Etc. Um, and it's so it's not that that I'm <laughs> arguing with the robots about. <laughs> what I'm arguing with them about is that the fact that I I can uh, There's another point that he says like this, uh, consciousness is like a fundamental part of the universe, and that's something I agree with. Um, it's just that they're kind of taking that to then go. Um, uh, maybe Byron wasn't, but but people keep taking it back to people. But then I guess like they are robots; they're not like biological humans. So that their very existence, our very existence, my very existence in this game, uh, Wong K's existence, um, is actually demonstrating my point that you can <laughs> that there's this fundamental property that can uh, exist in multiple ways. Can be expressed in multiple ways. Anyway, the gift. The gift of consciousness. Oh, we're going to be gifting the blocks to each other, right? That's probably what's going to happen. There's a thingy there, so to get that we need the blocks. Where's my friend? Hello? Oh, you're up there. What are you up to? 
Oh. Wait. Oh! <laughs> We're standing on the bottom, of course. Uh, that's fun. Okay, so that's the actual goal. Just to get through there. Real me's down there. I can go this way and get access to this. Or we can get the box. Should we get the box? Let's get the box. Real me can go get the box. Real me gets the box. I've probably accidentally swapped to not real me by now already. Okay, real me, go on here and grab that. Okay. And there's a red source there. I am real me right now. Oh, I'm not going there then. I'm still real me. Uh, there's a way up here. You can go back up if you like. What's my actual goal? To get both of us up there? Or to get the box up there? Oh, you can probably pass the box to me. Uh, fake me is going up, I guess. Real me is going to pass the gift. Which I do have. There you are. Can I get closer? Can I not grab that from here? Hmm. Real me. Right, take... No, I can't do it while jumping. Can I... I can't pass through there. It has to go this way. Well then, how else can I get any more heights? Am I being silly? Oh, maybe I can put... No, I can't put that on top and pick them both up. Ah, uh, This is real me. I can give you that. Wait, can I... I think that was just letting me drop that there. No? Maybe not. You're about to grab it, right? Yes. Okay, there we go. Real me is down there. Fake me finish the level. Why do I care? For some reason I do. Um, okay. Oh, wait, what's this? This is something. Secret? Yes. I like the music here. Is this a learny thing? Yes, it's a learny thing. Okay. Hmm, Lithrasy. Alrighty, let's have a listen. As we continue exploring the cold northern reaches of the island, the contrast between the harshness of this place and the softness of New Jerusalem becomes more and more pronounced. There is a kind of madness in what we are doing, hmm. going to a place that is so hostile to our existence. That does not mean there is nothing to love here. There is, in fact, a great beauty. But it is a hateful beauty. A beauty you can only love because there are places that are not like this. And yet, it is precisely this hateful beauty that the people of New Jerusalem fail to see and so cannot understand their own blessings. What's besides these robots' accents? Kind of curious, right? Okay, I guess we'll go do this triangle puzzle. Alrighty. Alrighty. Passing through. Where's my friend? Oh, got a cube. Oh, that's my friend. In prison. Uh, we've got a thingy, the platform, 
That's the end. What opens that? What's that up there? Is that something interactive? Is that part of the puzzle? What opens this? Is it... Is that something? Or is it part of the architecture? I am unsure. Uh, okay, what can I do? Anything? What opens this? Real me's in the middle. It's the jammer. Oh, so this opens this. Real me is over there. This is fake me. Fake me. Jammer. This thing. We could swap over. Um, what happens if you like put a cube here and then do this? Okay, it pushes it out. Okay. Um, so we need to jam this, I think. I, don't, I think that's just the architecture. Okay, to jam that, the jammer's going to come out. To get the jammer out, how's that going to work? A platform. It's like real me is coming in with the platform. Can we jump over? That's real me, this is fake me. I'll pick up the platform. Then... Can we jump over the gate? I think that's all we're doing, right? Real me. No? Oh, I guess we could also just jam this from right here. So I'm real me right now. Can I set this up? Yes. And then how do I get out? Uh, good question. The jammer's got, what, what? I can't jump over. I did try jumping over. It's because this is in the way, yeah. There's no other place to jump over. So this has to go through there, but this can't go through there. So it can't go through there, so it stays inside and it points at the thing. But then I have to be outside. Oh, right. Okay. Um, no, hold on. Open that. No. E Yes, you, fake me, come outside. Real me, go inside. Close this, this is how we pass it over. Yeah, because then we can switch back to fake me. Can I not? Can I not? Can I not? That feels like I should be able to do that, right? Am I not even... I can't swap to you anymore. The thing's not in the, in the way. I can't even see it. It's like down... Oh, maybe it is. Oh. Oh. Okay, you come close to me. This is real me? I don't remember anymore. Uh oh. I still can't put that on there. Huh. I thought this would be how I pass it out. So back to the other way round where you are in here. Real me puts it on top. While also jamming this, I guess. Then we take this. This is gonna make me go to the other side, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, you could, ooh. If you walk around, we could like lose contact with that. Huh. And then we get contact back again. Is that somehow useful? Weird. Okay, so I can close that if I lose contact with it. Is there something I could do like that for this thing? 
No. Do I think the jammer can't get out? Maybe. If the jammer can't get out, then how do I place it on top of me, pointing at that? Yeah, this is going to take me over, so I can't do that. Can't grab the jammer from the other side, can't place the jammer over the other side, so it's staying inside. Therefore, it's got to be pointed at that while... Oh, I don't know who's who anymore. This is real me. This is real me, right? While that is pointing at that. How do I get that pointing at that? Well, you can't set it up on your own platform. Can you? Can we take it off each other? Yes. But... Yeah, that also transfers me over. Um... So fake me's got this. Real me can make it point at... at the other thing. No. But then real me can't get out. What the hell's this gonna work ever? Am I missing something? This is real me. This is real me. Am I missing some component? There's the like awkwardness of like not being able to transfer something over that gap. But that's okay. If I accept that, then that's never coming out. All right. Oh, is that true? Actually, can you just walk through when it's on top of you? How does this work? So, fake me. Can I just walk through? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, it's easy. <laughs> I see. Uh, I pass through. Why is it showing me the title again? Weird. I think this is real me. Uh-oh. I hope so. I can't imagine Oof. spending years. That's not what I really should have done. <laughs> For what? Science? Enlightenment? It's nice. It's so horrible about I'd this place. I'd much rather be back home in New Jerusalem. I think it's beautiful. Still complaining. In its own way. But I don't understand how our ancestors could survive here. They were so fragile. Imagine getting stuck out here in the cold. I wonder if there are wolves. <laughs> it's kind of a miracle biological humans lasted as long as they did. Help. <laughs> it's a miracle I'm lasting as long as I do when I just walk into rocks like that. Because then I'm going to walk all the way to this thing. It's going to be like, oh, you need a green laser from somewhere. No, this is one. This is a different one. Oh, this is another sprite. I have to follow the blue thing. We're doing that again. Yes, we are. I wonder if they're always the same for because this is North One, that was East One. Um, it's over there somewhere. All right. Find the sprites. I'm not doing it now, though. I don't think I'm just gonna keep wandering. It's like just somewhere over there. Could be. Oh, it's there. I see it. Maybe we should just do it now then. Oh my gosh, such a long walk. And I get it. It's 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 a pretty place. I know what you're gonna say to me, game developers. It's about appreciating beauty, but I would appreciate the beauty of this if I were actually in it in real life. This is a video game. <laughs> And I appreciate the beauty of it being a video game, but beauty of it being a video game includes um, the beauty of design and the beauty of designing spaces such that they can be walked in and um, it not feel tedious and make your 
little finger hurts. I'm actually getting like RSR in my left hand. <laughs> okay. There it is. So we're gonna follow this again. Shall I just go down? Oh, uh, where'd you go? Where did you go? I actually don't know. It's the things over that way. Oh no, it got away from me. Okay, guess we'll do it again. Oh, it's not there. Uh oh. Oh, it's in the puzzle. That's where it went. You're being annoying, aren't you? It's fun that it's using the puzzle mechanics as part of it. Yeah. Oh, that's not enough. Where's the other one? Oh, you're up there, aren't you? Okay, uh, 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 that's real me, real me jump on here, jump on there, fake me, jump up, jump up, real me, grab the thing, okay. Now where are we going? Oh. Inside. Okay, looks like we're going up now. Hopefully it continues past this point somewhere. Yep. I think it might be done. My poor Pinky. There we go. I could turn Toggle Run on, I think. I'm sure it's an option, but I find that also a bit awkward. Hey, I got a star. Alright. We cannot return to the past. But the future can redeem all that has happened. It's funny that if you make a game about like appreciating the beauty of nature, it's hard to like. At least I find it hard as a player of those games to go, oh, this virtual representation of nature is the thing I should be appreciating. Because um, that isn't. I, sh I can absolutely appreciate this in its own way. <laughs> It's like, um, it's like if you like play a game about, um, I don't know what example am I going for, like, um, uh, like let's say you were playing a game about finding, actually here's a good example, <laughs> like Pokemon. <laughs> It's a, it's a game about finding creatures and being like, wow, look at all these amazing creatures in the world. I know it's like obviously about much more than that. There's many other reasons to enjoy Pokemon. But that is sometimes people are like, look, it's so fun. Or like Pokemon Go. <laughs> You're going to explore the world and find these <laughs> creatures that are just like 
like in the world, but there's like actual real creatures to appreciate. <laughs> Why don't you go find them? Go look at them. Uh, <laughs> like it's interesting. You can you can only like the the. I, the ideal situation is that you make a game, like let's say you want to make a game that is about appreciating the beauty in nature or about like um, the, 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 how fun it is to discover new creatures and, and, and watch them and see what they do and all that kind of stuff, see their behaviours. The, what you really want to hope for is that you encourage that, that kind of thinking outside of the game. Um, rather than just trying to create that sensation in the game, I think. And I think in order to do that, just creating the sensation in the game is not the right thing to be doing. It's it's like, it's not, I don't know. What am I saying? It's not quite, like if your goal is to encourage like appreciating the beauty of nature, I think the design, um, like what you should be designing for is not just like oh make the make the world huge and beautiful and look at it look at the views. I mean, this makes me appreciate rendering technology <laughs> and like what we can do with computers these days. Look at those shadows, beautiful. Look at the way the light hits here, fantastic. But if I want to go appreciate beauty, I'll go out for a walk. Although it's dark right now, so maybe maybe tomorrow. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, on Connie's. Like I'm, I'm sort of semi. I'm not joking, but I'm like I'm, I'm making a, a what I think is actually a good point there. I hope, um, but I'm also not being as. Uh, like totally serious, like I'm, I'm, I'm sort of semi-joking in a certain way. Anyway, on Cornelius. <clears throat> From the personal reminiscences of Mitku, 166. There are some people whose true importance you just don't notice at first. People who quietly hold things together without making a big deal of it. That's what Cornelius was. Always by Athena's side, he calmly and carefully helped us all stay on track, reminding us of our shared humanity and the values that had brought us this far. I cannot imagine how painful it must have been when Athena left him beh behind, but he went on his so-called research expedition. Most people thought he went looking for her. To be honest, I thought he might never come back, and I was surprised when he finally did. Are these people, are these, is Connie still around somewhere, or? I still don't understand how she could leave him. They seem to love it. Like, is, is, is suicide a thing in the world of, of, of these robots? Not, I'm not saying that's necessarily what happened, it just maybe kind of my thought went there of like, oh, like, I guess the robots can get destroyed and can they destroy themselves? After he returned, clearly this was different. He found the museum of the simulation and very rarely left his premises. The archive scholars doted on him, but he walled himself off, becoming almost as much of a recluse as Statius. Only then did I slowly understand how much the city had lost. Blake. William Blake? Yes, William Blake. God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night, but does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of death? God appears and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? Okay. So this is this is saying that. Well, I think it's basically saying that humans are. Like the things that we associate, that we often associate with God, is something that we we conjure up when you know. Things are bad, or we're suffering, or we're looking for light in some way, um, but. Otherwise. When we're not looking, when when that's not the situation we're in, we recognise that God is in human form. Humans are uh, an expression of God, or something. I don't know, something like that. Prime mover, <clears throat> excerpted from considerations by Statius. 
too. While it is hard from our vantage point to fully believe in any of the ancient religions, I must admit that I have come to believe in the existence of a prime mover, not a designer as such, certainly not an interventionist god, but some force that set the universe itself into motion. I do not know if it is possible for us to ever truly understand this being, since it must by definition exist outside our understanding of reality, but I do believe that it exists. Does it look upon us with love? Are we entertainment perhaps? Does it preserve some memory of us when we die? All of this I cannot answer, but I do not disbelieve those who honestly speak of having experienced some manner of brief communion with this entity, simply too common an experience in human history to easily discount. I can easily discount it. As the motion of the universe proceeds from the Big Bang, so whatever force animates us, whatever constitutes the true foundation of consciousness proceeds from the prime mover. What do you think about this, mother? Mm, about Athena responding. I don't believe in any kind of prime mover, but I thought you should read it because Eustathius is an intelligent person who came to this conclusion with a great deal of thought. It's important to respectfully consider points of view we don't disagree with. That's fair. We don't agree with, I presume that's said. Um, <clears throat> On modernity, from the book of annotated internet comments, uh oh. <laughs> modernity is so great, why is everyone so fundamentally disappointed with the world? Why do we sigh with pleasure at the sight of old houses, feel nothing but depressed and alienated by skyscrapers? Why do we yearn for lush forests and wide plains, not narrow canyons between buildings? Oh, why do we yearn for lush forests and wide plains, not narrow canyons between buildings? Um, we love all this technology so much, why is our idea of happiness to get away from it? Could it be that progress is just a story we tell ourselves to justify why we allow ourselves to be dominated by inhumanity and all the forms of living have something to offer? It seems that many of us share this desire to immerse ourselves in nature, that we are ourselves entirely technological beings, we enjoy and value the Earth's diverse and unpredictable biosphere, but does that mean that progress is just a narrative, as this ancient commenter suggests? Or does it mean that technological progression and a love of the natural world are not in fact mutually exclusive? And yet if this person was left on his own somewhere in the wilderness, he would feel nothing but terror. The appreciation of nature is rooted in the experience of civilization of safety. Athena, true, but he's still right. So much of what our ancestors created in the last years was alienating to the majority of people. And the question isn't one of modernity, but of control. <clears throat> Let's do another puzzle. We've done a lot of reading. We've done a lot of reading. Oh. Hello. Miranda? If we believe that yep. life is inherently valuable, if we think inherently. that other species are worth preserving, and we recognize that most of the universe is barren, then it follows that we have a duty not only to defend life, but to spread it. If life is the most valuable thing in the universe, then perhaps, in a sense, the cosmos itself is depending on us to do this. Like birds carrying seeds to uninhabited islands. Maybe that's our role in the galactic ecology. Is life the most valuable thing in the universe, or is it just a thing that can exist in the universe? <laughs> what, what does value mean, in this sense? I guess, like, I mean, what the game is saying is that the most valuable thing is the thing that can experience the universe, because without that, the universe is cold and dead. But... Yeah, that's where I start to disagree. I think the, the universe is beautiful and warm and alive, and it is because it's beautiful and warm and alive that this uh, this thing exists that we call consciousness um, and it probably exists all over the universe in various forms the, the universe can experience itself without us here um, okay let's go, go okay how does this interact can I, well neither of us can go through but we can pass it through I guess maybe that's the whole thing here. Uh, I'm trying to get a blue thing to here, the red thing there to start with to get that. Okay, red thing there. And where are the sources of laser? Probably on your side. There's blue. Do you have an inverter or something? Let's go over, let's have a look. What does this do? Oh, it opens that. And that opens that one. Yep, okay. So blue. Red. So red first is what I said. Yes. Um, so let's grab the connector. 
we don't have anything for converting colors. So we have the connector. Back and out there. You can set that up, or I can set that up, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. I think, unless there's a wall there, there might be a wall there. Can I step on this and see you? No. Do you want to walk over here slightly? Thank you. Which is real me. No, this is fake me. Uh... Yeah, I don't think that's connected. Yeah, that's the fence there. That's fine, we can leave you. Okay. Grab this. This is real me. I keep getting confused between E and click now. Um, so then blue to here. So one of these is going back through, basically. Right. To turn an extra corner. Oh, both of them are going back through. No, no. Hmm. No, it's more difficult than that. Blue is to get... Oh, no, to there. Yeah, they're both coming back through. Got it. Um, so, you, friends. Me, friends. Could you pass this through? Um... I think we're going to need something else as well, may may maybe. Yes? That's going to go there. Uh, no, because I can just transfer to you. It should be fine. Okay. Um, I can see myself. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, we're done. <laughs> cool. There we go, that'll do for now. So that was number six. And we did the triangle, so we're, we've almost got the eighth one. Uh, next time, we'll do seven and eight, and maybe do the triangle, and see how they go. Unless we get distracted by something, which is very possible. Oh. Uh oh, I'm doing task principle one, janky things. Not quite. I failed. I failed. Oh, I, 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 oh no, oh no. Uh, I think this is the end of me. Alright, goodbye. Or not. Wait, how far? How, how far? How far will you let me go? Can I go all the way down here? <laughs> I was very much intending to end the video there <laughs> when I died. Uh, that's not what's happening. Talk about distraction. Can we go in the ice cold water? I fully expected like that to be like basically an, an edge that would kill me after. I mean eventually the water will kill me. It's an old saying Ooh, it's about how in the end the sea will claim everything. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt that this is true. In the long history of the human species, entire regions have disappeared under the waves. Places like Beringia and Doggerland still echo in our cultural memories. But we shouldn't forget that life began in the sea. We are the children of the sea. And it's not through floods and ruin that the sea will claim everything, but through us. Uh, that, as I understand it, is a reference to another game by the Talos Principle, one of the writers. Okay, goodbye.